Hey, do you got games on your phone? <laughs> Smartphones are a lot more powerful than you might assume at first glance. They could call, they could text, they can give us literally any piece of information that's out there using the internet, and they can even watch movies or videos uploaded directly by people online. Like me. But there's a whole world of fun to be had while you're out and about. Step aside, RTX cards. There's a new gaming god in town. Allow me to introduce you to mobile games. Oh, wait. A lot of those aren't very good. While some mobile games can be pretty cool, they often end up feeling void of substance, usually relying on a repetitive gameplay loop that, honestly, gets old quickly. For every app on the App Store that has some sort of quality, there's hundreds, if not thousands, of these copy-pasted, ad-riddled games with no soul, but a lot of microtransactions. And while mobile gaming isn't exactly in the forefront of the industry, at least, not anymore, there was a period of time where there were a bunch of big-name studios wanting to get their hands on a piece of the mobile gaming market. So, in turn, a bunch of developers and publishers worked to get games on the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Whether it's by making spin-offs of their existing games, or if you want something with a bit more substance, but a little less effort, you could always try the subject of today's video. Mobile ports. Those things have been around ever since the mobile gaming market first began. Because why wouldn't you want to play Mega Man 2 in the absolute worst way possible? Now, playing a console game on a TV is pretty cool, but playing a console game on your phone is even cooler. And without mobile ports, there's no way to have that portable gaming experience. This doesn't exist. Just the fact these kind of games can even run on the iPhone back in the day really adds to the all-in-one feel that mobile phones were really banking on to be successful when they were first put out into the market. Now, the games don't run well, but they at least run. Sometimes. But what classifies as a mobile port? Is this a mobile port? What about this one? And what about this? Well, a mobile port is a console or PC game that was altered for the sole purpose of having it playable on a touchscreen. Regardless of quality, of course. So in the case of these three games, I believe that Sonic and Black Ops are the ports here since Mario Run is a spin-off designed specifically for mobile, and Black Ops Zombies, while only being a port of one game mode, is still a port nonetheless. Although I will say, playing Nuketown multiplayer on your phone in the year 2012 would most definitely play like complete ass, but it would still be pretty cool to see. Mobile ports are often regarded as the worst release of the game. <laughs> Whether it's because of shoehorned in microtransactions, the game not controlling well on a touchscreen, or just an overall lack of quality. This leads to them often being deemed as a joke in the gaming industry. That is, of course, if they're even notable enough to be deemable at all. Mobile ports have a decent range when it comes to the amount of effort and quality put into porting a game from consoles to mobile. Some mobile ports just don't seem to be all the way there when it comes to quality. And I believe it all comes down to the amount of effort that some companies put into transitioning the game to suitably work with touch controls. Some companies care more about making sure their port is as good as the other releases, while other companies just slap a ROM in there and give it touch controls. But some ports can actually be pretty cool. Some are visually identical to the initial release, and some actually look better than the original release. Not sure what happened here. There are even games like Scribblenauts Unlimited or Plants vs. Zombies, which have features that the PC versions of the game just don't have. And to top it all off, the game should ideally have the best controls possible, at least for a mobile game that wasn't designed or meant to be on mobile. But as a whole, getting the controls right is a serious issue when it comes to mobile ports. Sometimes they can work well, and they're decently responsive. But mobile controls can only be so good. At the end of the day, you're just tapping and dragging your fingers on a screen. No matter how it's designed, it'll never have the same tactile feedback as using a controller or a keyboard and mouse. But even then, on-screen controls are different for every game you'll play, and the size, shape, and positioning of the controls can make or break an experience. And not gonna lie, these things can get pretty quirky. They aren't like other mobile games. Just take a look at Resident Evil 4. This game is already on every other video game system that has ever existed. So why not just slap it on a mobile device? This is in fact the full game running on a phone. And it runs about as well as you'd expect. But the fact it's running at all is crazy. But 
Sometimes we should wonder if we should, rather than if we could. Some games don't go for mobile ports at all, and instead, choose to go for an alternate version of an existing game. Minecraft is a massive game that did this. Back in the day, before there was Minecraft Bedrock Edition, due to the limitations caused by mobile devices of the time, Mojang had to make a different and unique version of the game, known at the time as Minecraft Pocket Edition. It was pretty much just an older version of Minecraft Java, made in C++, without the nether, and sprinting, or hunger. Then, much later on, when things got good enough for the Pocket Edition to be on par with the Java Edition, it ended up getting a full multi-console release, as well as a snazzy rebrand to Minecraft Bedrock Edition. I feel like the best mobile ports are actually the games that don't try to port anything, and instead just make alternate game versions that are available on a phone. But what if your favorite game doesn't have a mobile port? Well, if it's from an older console, you can always see if it has an unofficial mobile port, aka EMULATION! Android devices are pretty well known for having a vast variety of games and consoles to emulate from, but there's still a few emulators that could be used on iPhones. Obviously, playing NES games on your phone isn't the best experience. The NES only has a handful of decent games, despite the fact that the system has over 700 of them, and all those good games are Mario. But what doesn't help is that now you have to play them on a touchscreen, which, as previously mentioned, isn't an ideal way to play video games. But what if your favorite game was released fairly recently? Unfortunately, phones aren't powerful enough to run recently released games right off the bat, but you can always play ripoffs. I've talked quite a lot about mobile ripoffs of popular games over the years, but in all honesty, there are points where you just can't play the latest and greatest games. Some people only have a phone, and PCs are expensive. That's where the mobile game ripoffs come in. Do you want to play Fall Guys but you're tired of waiting for an official port? Well luckily for you, there are plenty of games to choose from. You got Stumble Guys, Run Guys, Guys Are Falling, Fall.io, Run Royale 3D, Soda Guys, and many many more. While these games are definitely worse than Fall Guys, they're probably not the worst games to ever exist right? Mobile ports as a whole are rarely ever seen today, with a lot of the biggest PC games usually having mobile versions that coincide with the PC release in terms of both quality and effort. Nowadays, mobile ports are a bit of a bygone era. The majority of these games are actually unavailable today, and companies are now a lot better at making mobile games. For example, instead of porting the entirety of Mortal Kombat X to mobile, NetherRealm instead went about recreating and reworking the game to work much better as a mobile game, with stamina and microtransactions included. And instead of the old Genesis Sonic ports, Sega now has better versions of the Genesis ports, as well as not just one, but three Sonic Endless Runners. AND THEY'RE ALL RIPOFFS OF MINION RUN! There's also Rocket League Sideswiped, a mobile reimagining of Rocket League, instead of just porting the full Rocket League game to mobile devices, which wouldn't have been as well suited for mobile. Whether things are better today or not is up for debate, but regardless, mobile ports are a strange but interesting footnote in gaming history. Thanks for watching.